Hello everyone, we are continuing our week 8 lectures and we are talking about the European interventions. So we have already started talking about the printmaking technologies and that is one of the European interventions in the Indian subcontinent. So we have already looked into uh, the, the basics of the, of the different kind of printing technologies like relief, intaglio, planography and so on. And later on we of course we have different more printing technologies but like these are some of the basic differences we need to keep in mind when we are looking into the 18th and 19th century prints. So, with the uh, you know as, as we have already started talking about it that I mean how the different kind of printing they make their impact on the final images. So, here we have some of the examples. So, for example, here in the left side of the screen we have this one particular um, uh, image that, that was painted by this very well known European painter that is William Hodges and then it was uh, engraved later on. So, this uh, perhaps land William Hodges his uh, landscapes are celebrated as that I mean William Hodges, Thomas Daniel and William Daniel uh, and among many other uh, artists that we find in the 18th and 19th century during these times that uh, they have traveled extensively in the Indian subcontinent and they have made sketches, drawings and um, you know watercolor images and so on which were later on uh, transformed into prints and different other kind of images and they added to the documentation of different parts of the Indian subcontinent. So, this is also something that we find that um, there are the particular kind of language that is used, the aesthetic decisions one can also say that how that uh, made an impact on the way the Indian subcontinent was represented by the, uh, by the Europeans. So, here are some of these examples. So, for example, here in the left side of the uh, screen we have this, uh, this image which called the Sikri Gali and uh, this, this place is somewhere between Bengal and Bihar. And uh, both these places as we know for um, the for the British rule, for the trade relations and everything. So, both these places the Bengal presidency and the area Bihar were very important for uh, the colonizers and this, this routes between them were also well traversed. So, what we find here this particular place which is called Sikri Gali and um, in this image is made in metal engraving and if we see some of the ways in which uh, the image is produced in the in the front in the foreground like I mean in this particular area it is dark and it is completely uh, covered with greenery. So, of course, I mean it is a monochromatic picture so that is the reason we cannot really see the color of the green but uh, one can imagine that I mean this lush vegetation that is shown here and this, this wilderness that is created in the foreground and through the foreground then the viewers can have you know like I mean uh, then the viewers can see the rest of the, uh, the landscape. So, then we see this particular pathway which is sort of like I mean uh, you know bending and going towards the hilly region and then there is a small suggestion of a hut this this thatch roof hut which is also typical of uh, various parts of Indian subcontinent and especially in eastern India. And then we also see some of the figures here. So, sometimes the figures are used in this landscape as a scale to give a sense of like I mean if there is a monument, if there are like I mean roads and mountains and hills. So, the figures would give us a scale of like I mean what is the scale of those monuments or like I mean the, the hills and everything that, that we see in a print because the print will always be uh, a portable one. It is not we, when we are talking about the prints we are 
talking about the ones which can be held by hand or which can be displayed on the wall. So, the, for, for this ones having a scale within the images that makes us uh, understand that I mean what is the interrelation between this figure and the landscape and if there are monuments and anything else that is present there as well. So, these things are there and in the distance we see that on the top of this hill there is a, a kind of a ruin and so those you know like I mean those things are there and then in the entire hillock and this uh, the part of the foreground is covered with um, you know this vegetation and which looks wild. It does not really look manicured, it does not really look cultivated but it is wild. And then in the distance we see there is a suggestion of um, hills in uh, there and also one can see that I mean how this this hatched lines and then um, you know the strokes of the engraving tool is used for creating the distance. For example, in the foreground to emphasize this wilderness we have much more this hatched lines and then like the depth. So, different degrees of this, this tonality that is created by the hatched lines and all possible details of the vegetation has been made here. Whereas, the hill in the distance we see that just almost as a shadow that if one gets out of this wilderness then they might have a view of this hills in the distance. Now, the other also the other important part that we also find here is this low horizon line. So, if we consider this entire rectangular picture plane here and in this one we have this very low horizon line and uh, from there we have the rest of the place of this uh, image that is reserved for the sky. And in the sky we also see dramatic clouds. So, if we consider this is not just this only one image in which we have this low horizon line and then this expansive sky with dramatic clouds. This is not just present in this one printing, but um, not only in this one print, but in many other prints. So, a reason for that we also find it that how um, the British painters and the administrators wanted to represent the Indian subcontinent as a place that is wild, that is um, many of these places which are uninhabited and then like there is this expansive land which needs to be ruled that is unruly, that is, that is wild and if that can be civilized then a lot can be done with that. So, that was the kind of message the British administrators as well as the British painters the um, um, and of course, like I mean you know whoever had traveled the traveling artist all of them wanted to promote. And that is the reason we see this, this very specific kind of aesthetics choices were made. So, if we compare this particular image to something that we have already studied in the past for example, the miniature paintings. So, because I mean if we are looking at this image, this image is made in uh, 1793, it is the end of 18th century. So, even in the 18th century if we think about some of the miniature paintings from the Pahari region, from the Punjab hills, from Deccan and so on, we find that I mean the horizon, the line of horizon is much more higher in the in the picture plane and then the, the images that we see in the distance they are not really faded into the background, but they are all like uh, assimilated into the narrative of the images. So, there we can find that I mean the, the depicting a narrative of the court of the epics of the mythology and everything else. So, those things had more prominence. So, that is the reason like here we see a huge shift in terms of how this uh, you know the landscape of the Indian subcontinent was depicted. So, these are some of the things we have to keep in mind when we are comparing this, uh, this different so, uh, sets of images and also uh, how to make sense of them.
And also when we are getting into the details of this the engraving technique, one can think that I mean how the small small lines they, they uh, and uh, very skillfully uh, done and then uh, how those small small lines, the hatchings, each and every detail that makes these friends believable. So if there is a sketch which is done um, with swift strokes. So that might seem like, I mean, um, that can also attest to eyewitness that someone was present in that spot and they have made those swift drawings. But at the same time, if we think about it, that how that goes beyond, like, I mean, if there are more details, if there are those small lines, if each and every minute details, those things are depicted in this print, then that becomes much more believable to everyone because of all the elements those are present. And then that, that also tells the people who perhaps have not been to Bengal or Bihar about the land and why there is a need for ruling over this land. So, these are some of the ways in which we can uh, interpret this new aesthetics and how this printing uh, technology that also had enabled this new kind of imagery. Similarly, we can also see that I mean uh, the, uh, this, this image in the right side. So, this one was drawn by Thomas Daniel and William Daniel. And uh, this is one of the Buddhist temples that we find as part of um, in, in the Deccan region of uh, India. And here what we find here is that I mean these are drawn and engraved by Thomas Daniel and William Daniel. So here the drawer and the engraver are the same people. It is not really you know different people as such. So, they are the people who are responsible for drawing these particular sites and they claim to be present there and they have also supervised the engraving part of it and printing part of it when uh, those were printed and published from London. So, the colors in the early engravings we find a lot of the times we find that after printing these images careful strokes of watercolor was used on the top of them to uh, add colors to them. Because in engraving uh, also there are restrictions in uh, how, how you can uh, use color in them. So that is the reason we find that in some of the early engravings in the 18th century, in the early 19th century and so on, there are those hand colored engraving prints. So, even when these were uh, published as prints and those are hand colored, so one can imagine that uh, during the 18th century, during the 19th century, these were also prized possessions. And then the, um, you know, the limited edition of the same images would be produced, they would be hand colored, they would be made into a book or a folio and then the patrons or the buyers can have them. So, this is also something that we can find that how um, if one wants to promote the idea of wilderness in the Indian subcontinent or this lost world. For example, here as we can see in this particular image, this excavated temple that means like how the archaeological survey was in action and they have excavated some of those early historic sites in the Indian subcontinent that we have studied as part of the, um, as part of this course. So, this the way this this lost world that was represented in these images, this vast expanse, the wilderness and all these things those were expressed in these images. If those were made into only one painting that can stay with only one person, but when they are made into folios and when they were made in you know edition, so that means uh, in not only in one piece, but in multiple copies then the same idea the, that what they wanted to promote that can be uh, promoted much more efficiently. So, that is the reason what we find that I mean the printing was also a very effective tool of administration also uh, disseminating um, the knowledge that about the Indian subcontinent what, what the Britishers or the colonizers they wanted. And there are some of the other uh, examples 
like this one that we have so one can see that this is how those folios were produced and this is of course this also comes from uh, Thomas Daniel and William Daniel and we can see that how in this is the title page of one of those folios and in this one we see that I mean there are 12 views of from the different sites of the Indian subcontinent and those were first made into drawings and then those were engraved and here in the title page it is also mentioned that how this is engraved by himself and Thomas Daniel and William Daniel. So Thomas Daniel and William Daniel how they were involved in both making the images as well as printing them. So this is this is also something that adds to this idea of the eyewitness. So we are still talking about a time when photography was not available in a large scale. I mean of course that I mean we see that from 1830s and so on during this time in France and parts of Western Europe there are experiments with photography but this one we can see that I mean this one is published in 1808. So that means in the very early decade of 19th century. So during this time definitely there is no question of photography. So if the artists and the engravers they claim that they were the ones who were present there in those sites, they drew these ones and then they were the ones who have also engraved them and printed them. So that sort of like I mean gives a sense of authenticity that they are the eyewitness and whatever the views we are getting in this particular folio or this book is authentic. So these are the ways in which like the idea of India was formed through the printed images and through the dissemination of this printed images. So for example in this one what we can see there is this plaque and then there are different kind of uh, the broken you know like I mean there are the different uh, broken fragments of the historical um, architecture. So it seems like I mean there is a lamp you know there is this a tower which holds uh, lamps and that is something that we find uh, that was there in part of southern India in Karnataka and so on also in parts of Maharashtra and Goa and then there are also like representation of hero stones and even this particular uh, this this um, you know this this low relief stone it almost looks like a memorial stone that is raised on the top of a grave. So uh, this kind of like I mean uh, uh, images are chosen for that cover page and that sort of suggests this idea of the lost world that I mean there is this rich history something that the, a lot of Europeans were longing for and then also there is this wilderness. So this history and wilderness these two ideas that we have already discussed how that was um, how that is presented here in the title page of this book and how with the subsequent printing printing the same images or making addition of this uh, printed images how that was disseminated to the larger audience in Western Europe. This is another example and this one also comes from Thomas Daniel and this is as they say that I mean it is part of the Canaries caves and that basically means that uh, in Karnataka or like I mean the Kannada speaking region and the Carnatic region and then like I mean this is part of the caves there and this is also a metal engraving you know this image is made uh, in this technique and in this one what we find is this is also during perhaps one of the archaeological expeditions in which there is this certainly we are looking into a Buddhist cave site and here we have a representation of a stupa and then there are um, you know uh, there are those low relief or like sometimes the high relief in the walls which show different images of Buddha and here we have images of uh, Buddha and the Buddhist deities who are standing 
and so it's kind of that I mean we have um, of course that I mean how this particular area which looks like long abandoned and then all this this images of history the standing Buddha uh, which are carved in the stone they stand like these ancient ghosts and then here we also have like I mean this this really uh, thick wall and then there is a small opening and the opening is made from the lack of preservation and through which we also see there is this another stupa that is present here. So that gives us a sense that I mean this, this cave site it is not just one cave that is being uh, found there but I mean there are series of caves I mean the, the way we see them um, you know in the many of the cave sites in Karle, in Vaja caves and so on. So, these are some of the visual strategies in which we find that I mean the broken surfaces are used for showing the expanse of this place at the same time the broken surface also shows the lack of preservation, the lack of care. So, those are the things that, that also justifies the need for a colonial rule in the Indian subcontinent. Now here we also see something that I mean the kind of the depth and everything is also created and um, so and then we also see there are those uh, three figures who are present in the in the foreground. So only in the foreground we see that there is a bit of sunlight that sort of in um, you know uh, illuminates the landscape. It is a rocky terrain and here there are those three figures what we see here. So, in the center we have this one very um, identifiably uh, European figure with a hat and a coat and then um, so this person is perhaps uh, one of the key figures in this ex expedition and we see that I mean this, this person is ready here for doing further documentation on this site and then there are two figures and uh, who can be identified as the local people and they are the ones perhaps they are showing this particular person around and assisting him to know more about this place and this is also a sign to show that how the people in the Indian subcontinent can help the Britishers, can help the colonizers for a better rule in the country. So, these are some of the markers, the small visual markers we can find in this prints and these images which were um, then they were circulated and then this idea of the British rule which can grow um, in harmony and uh, with the help of the people, the indigenous people in the Indian subcontinent. So, those things were promoted by these images. Now, apart from the scale, apart from the scale there is also something we find that is uh, very uh, interesting in terms of the, uh, the use of color. So, as I have already mentioned that this is a hand engraving and then like the tints of watercolor was used on the top of them. So, we find that except for this particular figure and this particular patch there is not too many colors which are used in the rest of the image. The only colors that we see here are um, you know like an, in the entire cave site the, this somber darkish tone is used and which also sort of like I mean uh, suggest that I mean how this is the ghost of the past which is looming over um, the future of the subcontinent. So, and then what we find here the only places where color is applied is the attire of these people, the ones who are assisting the this uh, colonial official for uh, breathing new life into this cave site as well as into the Indian subcontinent. And this is also the place which is illuminated by the sunlight. So, the sunlight definitely shows a new hope. So, these are the ways in which we find this very careful use of color, tonality and um, of course, the creation of the depth and everything else that uh, enable creating this kind of this, uh, this very complicated images. In one hand the images which can be considered as the eyewitness of Thomas Daniel, William Daniel and their, their colleagues 
but at the same time we can also see that these images go much beyond than just being eyewitness to certain sites but they actually speak about this ambition of the of the colonial officials and how they wanted to represent this indian subcontinent and how they wanted this knowledge to be disseminated among the other people in western europe so similarly, we find that print was also used for uh, colonial documentation, not only of the sites, not only of architecture, archaeological site or um, you know dif dif different sites in the Indian subcontinent, but it is also used for documenting people and plants. So, in the uh, late 18th century and in the 19th century, we find that there were uh, extensive documentation of the different groups of people in the Indian subcontinent and categorizing them and doing extensive anthropological survey to understand their physical features and everything else. So, those things we can see that I mean some of the, um, the early signs of those kind of documentations were present in some of the prints. So, for example, this one comes from Balthazar Solvent's set of uh, images. So, this one that called the Hindus and th this particular um, set of images that we find they were published in 1799. And then, um, of course, that I mean, what we have here is that I mean, there are the people from the Indian subcontinent and mostly from um, Eastern India we find, and either they are from different caste groups, and the visual marker of caste was also something that they were highly interested in, and that is the reason that was also emphasized in this prints as well as in these documentations. And then we also find different kind of occupational groups. So, for example, this one, this particular image that we have on screen and this is something that is called the comers. So, that means the potters, the ones who work with clay and who make pots, right. So, in this particular image that, that is, that is uh, it is an etching. So, it is not an engraving, but it is etching. So, that means that I mean how this is made on this metal plate and this is etched in the acid bath and then that is printed onto paper. And the colors that you see here, it is again, it is a hand colored one. So, what happens in this images as well, that we see that there are these figures who will be prominently shown in the images. Each image will have this one particular figure or one group of people who will be there present in the foreground or in the middle ground and then something or other will be happening in the background to support this figure. So, here what we find is this particular figure that uh, who is wearing this um, you know white dhoti and with a white um, you know like a shoulder cloth and then there are um, um, you know and he assumably stands in front of his workshop. So, the workshop it is a very simple workshop that is a Kumar's workshop or a Potter's workshop and in this one we find that there is this another figure who sits there and um, then um, you know like I mean they continue with the work. So, um, in this way what we find here that there are um, this, this occupational groups, the caste groups they are represented in these images and um, you know um, it is not just that one figure that is shown in this image, but it is um, um, you know the, the, the figure and the background they were all merged together to give a, a wholesome sense of what the entire area look like or like how their workshop and living condition look like. So, um, again this is even though at a time like this we can imagine that they were uh, something that, that was considered to be the eyewitness uh, a representation of the reality, but now that we can consider that I mean what all other agendas were also there behind making these images, we can think that these are also staged images, these are um, carefully crafted images as opposed to something that is just seen in the, you know in front of us and represented in form of drawing or print. We will continue on the um, you know on this topic in the next lecture, thank you.